Greetings, Earthlings! Do you believe we're not alone in the universe? Well, hold on to those tinfoil hats of yours because we've got some out of this world evidence that the government sure does not want you to see. In this video, we are going to be diving deep into the top five most concerning pieces of alien abduction out there. From missing time to strange paintings and even stranger destinies, these cases will have you questioning just about everything you thought you knew about extraterrestrial life. So buckle yourself up and let's get ready for a wild ride. Are you ready to believe? Let's get into it. You let me know if you've ever had an experience ever like any one of these. Maybe you've been brought up to an alien spaceship and probed, or maybe you just saw something weird in the sky. Whatever it is, I want to hear. Number 5. The Pascagoula Abduction Our first abduction story for you today is going to be an incident known as the Pascagoula Abduction. It happened in October 11th, 1973, when two friends were fishing on the Pascagoula River in Mississippi, hence the name. Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker claimed that day that they were abducted by aliens and have vivid memories of one of the most compelling alien abduction cases in history. According to Hickson and Parker's stories, they saw a blue light hovering above the riverbank while they were fishing. They decided to approach it, I guess I personally would not have. They claimed that they saw three short gray humanoid bipedal entities with gray wrinkled mottled skin and crab like appendages. Sounds like those like crab bad guys from Fallout 3 if anyone knows what I'm talking about. The beings levitated Hickson and Parker into their craft where they were subjected to a quick extraterrestrial checkup for lack of a better word. I bet being levitated was probably kind of fun once you get over the sheer cosmic horror that would come with being abducted. Hickson Hickson claims that his alien checkup lasted only about 20 minutes and mostly involved the gray crab alien sticking a probe right up his nose. Hickson and Parker were released back down to Earth, allegedly with all of their memories of the incident intact, which is a bit of a rarity in alien abduction cases, and swiftly reported it to the authorities and an investigation was launched. The case quickly garnered national attention. Air Force even got involved. Now, a good dose of skepticism should always be present when talking about any alien abduction story. I think that's reasonable. You shouldn't just believe them sight unseen. It's kind of a wild thing to claim, in all fairness. It's good to keep an open mind of what could be true and what could be out of this world. And if you're looking for way more out of this world stories, we have got so, so, so many videos on aliens and flying saucers and all sorts of weird things up in the night sky. If aliens aren't your jam at all, that's totally fine, I respect it. We got cryptids, we got horror movies, we got true crime, we got just about anything freaky you can think of. So hit that subscribe button, hit the bell if you wouldn't mind, but do me a favor, would you kindly do that at the end of this video? Cause I got way more alien abduction stories coming up for you right now. Now, number four, <laughs> Kelly Cahill. Our next abduction story comes to us from the land down under and involves a woman who was brought aboard an alien ship down under up above. Her name is Kelly Cahill and in 1993, her story shocked Australia, which is, is not easy to do. They're not an easily shockable nation. According to Cahill, she and her husband were driving home from a friend's house in the early hours of the morning when they saw a strange object hovering in the sky. As they approached it, the object suddenly descended and landed in front of their car, blocking their path. Cahill claimed that the craft was a triangular shaped UFO and was larger than her car. Cahill and her husband then experienced a period they would describe as missing time, unaware as if there was a hole in their memories. They would later recall that they were being taken aboard the craft and experimented on by strange beings which they described as being tall and thin with bluish gray skin and large black almond shaped eyes. She claimed that they were communicating with her telepathically and that she was able to understand understand them despite not knowing their language, meaning she got to follow along with the horrors of what's happening. The big problem I think we, we have with being abducted by aliens, first and foremost, is the language barrier. Wouldn't be scary at all if I knew what tissues they were collecting and what parts of me they were cutting open. I think I'd be totally cool as a cucumber. Cahill reported seeing other humans in the craft alongside her in a state of intense duress, probably because probably they didn't understand the aliens should have been translated. She said that eventually the beings, once they were finished with her, peacefully released her and her husband back home where her story became the subject of a TV documentary and an international attention. Do you believe her? Did she really get abducted by aliens that night? Number three, Linda Napolitano. Linda Napolitano, also known as Linda Cortile in some circles, is a woman who claims that she was abducted by aliens in New York City in 1989. Her story has become one of the most famous but also controversial 
controversial alleged alien abduction stories. According to the way she tells it, Napolitano was asleep in her 12th floor apartment in Manhattan when she was suddenly awoken by a bright light. She claimed to have seen three small beings with large black eyes and pale skin who levitated her out of her bedroom window into a waiting nearby UFO. Napolitano described the beings as being humanoid and about 4 feet tall. That's a great size for an alien to be. Napolitano reported that she was taken to a room on the craft where she was examined by the beings. She said that she was then taken to a council room where she saw several human-like beings who were apparently in charge of the operation and they all looked like Rick from Rick and Morty. Napolitano claimed that the beings communicated with her telepathically and told her that they were from the planet Serpo and were conducting experiments on humans to better understand our physiology. Ah. Okay then, well, completely reasonable, no cause for any alarm, I understand, take as many humans as you need, take as much tissue as you need, understand our physiology, you just, you love learning, nothing wrong with that. Napolitano's alleged abduction gained widespread attention, with her story being featured in major news outlets and a book detailing her story as well. Now years after the fact, Napolitano has maintained to anyone who'll listen that what happened to her was the good and honest truth, and has since become a fairly notable figure in the UFO and alien communities for sharing her unconventional story. What could that council be? I think there's a good chance that could be the Council of Ricks. Number two, the Allagash abduction. Our next tale of alien abductions coming up for you is the Allagash abduction. Named after the Allagash waterway in Maine where it took place. In 1976, a group of four friends who'd all met in college were taking a camping trip. Canoeing and relaxing, good times on a good weekend. Their trip would be a trip they'd never forget, not just because the salmon were jumping that week. The men, twin brothers Jack and Jim, and friends Chuck and Chuck, Charlie all decided to go out fishing on the lake at night. Before setting off though, they lit a large campfire to act as a landmark from the water so they knew how to get back. The evening transpired normally, fishing, sharing stories, until the men saw a blinding light in the sky. A glowing orb that shone brighter than any light any of them had ever seen before, flashing all sorts of bright radiant colors. This object was hard to make out, but looked to be 80 meters in diameter and was slowly approaching the fishing boat. The light was described as blinding. The men hurriedly panicked and paddled back to the shoreline to discover that their campfire had been completely smoldered and looked to have been out for hours and hours despite the men having not been out nearly that long. The men then started reporting having nightmares, all very similar, seeing a silver operating room and long tall giant headed creatures examining them in this room, taking blood samples, skin samples and so on. They all reported extremely similar nightmares and described the aliens and the room the same way. The men underwent psychiatric evaluation and were all deemed mentally stable even passing lie detector tests. So what happened? Were they just really bored out on the water and they cooked up a story worthy of Hollywood? Was this a mass hallucination? Or were these unlucky men plucked by visitors from another world for study? We may never know, but I'm interested to hear what you think, so let me know down below, okay? And number one. David Huggins. David David Huggins. Where do I begin? Our last story is that of David Huggins. I personally think I saved the best for last. At least I think so. Let's see if you agree as well. David Huggins is an artist who claims that he's been abducted by aliens not just once, but multiple times throughout his life. His first account happened when he was very young, reporting that he saw a UFO hovering over a nearby field. And a humanoid figure appeared down from the craft, blessing Huggins by telling him telepathically that he had a special mission to fulfill in life. If only he had any idea what that meant, just a special mission, that's very vague. He would get closer to the truth on that because over the years, Huggins claimed that he had several encounters with these same alien humanoids, who he describes as being tall and thin with large heads and eyes. He says that these beings have taken him aboard their craft and shown him a number of things including the creation of the universe and the future of the human race. Now here's where, um, here's where things get Bit, bit interesting. Huggins claims that as part of fulfilling his galactic destiny, that he he um he's fathered several human alien hybrids with the with the extraterrestrials. Um, okay. <laughs> Inspired by these momentous events, Huggins painted his truth 
rather directly influencing his artistic career with several of his paintings and his works depicting humanoid beings and, and UFOs and, and sometimes showcasing what happens when an, an alien and a person love each other very much. His paintings are actually visible in the Visionary Art Museum in Baltimore if you want to go check them out sometime. I will say they're pretty fun paintings. I would love to have one in my living room. Just a fair warning though before you go googling, they are definitely not safe for work unless your work is my work. At which case, looking at pictures of aliens kissing is my job, but also my passion. Do what you love, and you never work a day in your life. And brother, I have never worked a day in my life. And that's about all she wrote for this one, my ghouls and goblins. You take it easy now. Please look up a picture of an alien kissing later. Creep on creeping on, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>